How's it going? It's Jim. Today we're looking at the E-Move Touring from Voro Motors. This is one that is updated in the middle of 2020. And I'm here in my backyard. I got actually some stuff blooming, which is nice right now in the middle of the winter. And I'm going to show you the features of it and take it for a ride and tell you what I think at the end and hope to help you out. So this is retails for $899 through Vora Motors. Uh, Vora Motors has been pretty well known for having good customer service. They have a presence down in Los Angeles. And yeah, let's just get into the scooter. We're gonna start here up on the handlebars moving from right to left. We got the display, which is unchanged. A long press on the power button turns the scooter off and on. Uh, it takes two buttons of a press to move through the speed limits which is that large number here. Within the display, you get trip functionality, current odometer, you can tell I've rode this, this particular one 50 miles. Um, current voltage, which usually is pretty close to the voltmeter, which is another added thing with the voltmeter and the key. You can see the power is controlled by that, as that shows that when I turned it off. Um, folding handlebar, by sliding these to the side, it's really hard to do one-handed. Um, 22 and a half inches wide handlebars you got on this side this is also an added feature which is the headlight switch and horn um, you also have a brake lever with the textured handle the bell and it has a motor cutoff one thing Vora Motors has been really good about doing is gradually moving to most of these things except the voltmeter uh, are have waterproof connectors up in here so you can easily change these if you either want to upgrade change or you have you know, to replace one of these items for some reason quick release hinge here two positions on the handlebar presets that gives you 39 inches from the deck to the handlebars and 41. Uh, 41 is pretty high like that's that's really higher than most other electric scooters so this could be a better option for some taller folks um, you see there I'm hitting the switch on the handlebars to turn on that front headlight. Um, you will notice there are also deck lights that are not on, and that is actuated by a button over here next to the charging port. Uh, kind of a peculiar thing on some of these. I'm going to turn the switch off, and you're going to see the headlight go off and the deck light stay on. So they are independent of the switch but it doesn't, even if you left them on, uh, it would take a very long time for you to have any issues with, you know, running down your battery. Speaking of the battery, that's always the gist of the scooter, right? It's in the deck here, it's 48 volts, 13 amp hours. And probably the most significant change for this scooter is this is now using LG cells versus generic cells. Uh, the best part is during that change, the price did not increase. Um, thing I didn't, I kind of skipped here in the front. You got an eight-inch air tire in the front with three so three shocks. You have two spring shocks and one little kind of damper shock here in the center that all you know give this scooter a lot of travel. The deck that you're looking at there is one of the larger decks in the class, really. Uh, 23 inches long by seven and a quarter inches wide. Uh, all these dimensions I'm mentioning are ones that I personally measured. So I have a size 10 shoe, and you can see the ability to place your feet, and it's wide enough you can even go side by side. There's a lot of, it's nice having this much deck space, and because of the shape of that rear fender, you can even extend it out further um, and kind of effectively use more than the actual flat part of the deck. Uh, these bolts back here are for the seat attachment, so there's been more accessories available for the Touring. Up on the handlebars you can put on a thumb throttle, there's some different throttle options that you can change out. Uh, you got a kickstand that works perfectly well, doesn't have any issues with the kickstand. Rear fender here, and that light was also upgraded on this model, and it does have, I'm pretty sure, Hopefully you can see it there, some brake light functionality. Pretty good wire management here uh, with a loom on there that it makes it look pretty clean. Here's your power a switch for the lights on the deck lights. Uh, a charging port here, which is a standard two amp charger. Nothing too special there. Um, coming back to the motor here. This is a 500 watt 
nominally rated rear motor with a eight inch solid rubber tire um, with a drum brake on here. Now, the nice thing about the drum brake is it's really quick and easy adjustment right here. I will let you know that on my extended range test, I had this brake cable pop off multiple times. Luckily, the electronic braking, so it has electronic regenerative braking, was strong enough that I didn't, didn't, it didn't present a hazard for me, but I contacted Voro, and this little piece here, uh, there was some errors on some of these scooters where this was not deep enough. So under large bumps, especially as you're braking, there'd be a little more slack in this cable. Um, it was actually popping out. So they sent me a new one of these. And so if you're having an uh, issue where your cable's popping out, I would contact Vora Motors and they should send you a new one of these. A couple of other just metrics from the advertisement side of it. Um, and I'm, I'm having to look at my cheat sheet, I'm sorry. Uh, so the warranty on this is they have a one year warranty. So that's great, you actually get a full year warranty. Uh, this has a pretty high weight rating uh, from the manufacturer of 330 pounds, which is really high. Uh, weight rating is kind of an interesting phenomenon with different scooters. They tend to be kind of all over the map. Um, it also has an IP54 water resistance rating. I would take water resistance ratings with a grain of salt. I look at the warranty of the manufacturer and almost all of them don't cover water damage. So uh, just take that water rating with a grain of salt. This also rated at 25 miles of range with four hours of recharge time. Um, my maximum range I got here was a little under 22 miles. Um, and I got a little higher recharge time than that. Now I'm gonna dive a lot more into the data side on the video number two. So if you are interested in data and knowing how I collect it, uh, I collect a lot of data. So that's why it takes me a while to get these videos out. So if you would like to see some of that along with a little bit of my complaining section, um, that's gonna be in the other video. So if you'd like to watch it, it should be, this video will run into that one. Unnecessary aside, if you're a major sports retailer and you have a name that's very recognizable, could you please do a little bit better in naming your sales? I'm getting lots of emails from you, Dick Sporting Goods. Here's the image. Think about it. All right, we're going to do a little ride test on the eMove Touring here, show you how it rides. Um, and I'm just going to show you how I typically fold it up. So I have it folded. And I, a lot of times I'll leave the handlebars out at the position that I ride them, like I have it here. So then it's just releasing that pin. Doesn't take a whole lot. I lift up. There's some force popping into place. Handlebars up like that. And I have these little internal grub screws, which is right there. And those are basically your active shim. So you bring them out to a point where you don't have much movement, um, but you can also still fold them. If you get them too far out, you can actually it inhibits your ability to fold the handlebars. Um, and you can see here why I'm pushing it through the gravel. It has a tendency, the smaller diameter tire to dig in. So it kind of limits your ability to do much off-road riding because it will tend to get hung up in, in little bumps um, and then if it hangs up in a bump you're pretty much you know doing the Superman thing uh, but that being said the suspension does allow you to do some stuff that other scooters can't do that we're going to show you here in a minute so some of that noise is actually the suspension flexing uh, as the torque of that wheel kind of compresses it uh, but the effect is between that little spring back there where the brake adjustment is The effect is a lot of noise really with this scooter. I, I'm riding, it's about 55 degrees out, so at the lower temperatures in the fall and winter, it does tend to be noisier. And you hear there the squeaking of the springs. All right, so we're here in a speed limit one. And I, have I do not have cruise control engaged. So you can tell we're, uh, we're flying along at uh, eight miles per hour. So speed limit one is uh, pretty ginger, but it works okay for going around, uh, you know, pedestrians or somewhere we need to go slow. Here in speed limit two, you get a pretty big jump. And we're 
pretty much, you know, we're above 80% charge. So yeah, we got a good amount of speed here. Display showing 18. We're probably going a little slower than that. So it can be, it takes a little bit of practice because there are two buttons to push when you're changing speed limits when you're riding. Um, but it's not too bad once you're used to it. But here I'll give you a kind of an idea of... I'm going to do some acceleration from a stop here. And I'll put on the screen how this fares. It's actually quite a spunky scooter from an acceleration standpoint. It takes a moment there to get to get off the line, but with the eight-inch tires and hoping not many more right people pull out in front of me. Um, with the eight-inch tires, you get a fair amount of effective torque to the ground. And I tend to use uh, the electronic braking a lot, so I tend to feather the brake to let like that electronic brake engage. And then from that point, you know, I don't use a lot of full-on braking in this scooter. But I'm going to show you, like, one of the things here, like, with, if you notice, there's a real narrow spot coming up there in the path. But there's enough suspension in the scooter, I can just bail off this curve. And it takes a little bit of practice to do that uh, because you have, to, you have to pull the front tire up a little bit. And with a rear-powered scooter, if you do that a little too hard at the same time you accelerate, you can kind of get yourself a little wonky. Top speed on this little nice flat ground here and see what you see what we get. So you can see there we got a little bit of a sag on the battery indicator. Uh, when we're under full power. The, I'll put on the screen what my highest range uh, test result was, and that was not in this fastest speed mode. Uh, in this fastest speed mode, I got on the order of 18 miles. Um, I'll have to correct that on the screen. I'm not remembering perfectly well. Uh, but in the speed limit two, I got, I didn't get as much more range as I expected. Now, I'll talk more in my comparison video, but the upgrade to the LG cell seems like you get a little better full all out range, um, and but a less, a little less um, moderate output range, which I kind of find sort of fascinating and maybe it's related to the battery chemistry. All right, this, this park here has some pretty choppy uh, concrete, so I'm going to show you how this works on some chalky concrete. I'm just going to kind of go over the grass, you know. Solitaire definitely does transmit some of that harsh that harshness through, even though there's another suspension. So you can see there, I did a couple bunny hops on this. It's light enough to do that. I, I kind of find scooters much over this weight. That it starts to hamper that ability to, to bunny hop. Braking wise, once I resolved that issue of having the brake cable that was popping off, uh, the scooter brakes pretty well. Uh, and I'll put that on the screen how it compares to some other similar, similarly set up scooters. Uh, you know, it, Having a single brake, you do. T it does take a little bit of skill to get used to it. I'll kind of illustrate. I'm going to go about. I'm I'm going 20, so pretty fast for trying to brake pretty fast. And I'm going to go right at this fence, kind of show you how quickly I can do it. Um, 
But the trip I'm doing right now is I'm actually bebopping over to my the mechanic. Uh, I forgot to drop something off over there for when I drop off my car. Uh, these are some of the, it's about a three mile ride. And this is the kind of stuff I find myself using this size of a scooter for. It just replaces, I mean, I don't have to warm up my car. I don't have to do anything like that. It works really pretty well for me. Uh, the handlebars are fairly stable, but still, like I just did a turn, a hand signal there. And that's not that easy to do on a scooter like this. Uh, so you have to be really careful. Um, the handlebars are nice and wide, but you still don't have, you know, ultra stability because of these narrowish tires, or smallish tires, and that little bit of instability that also makes it quite maneuverable. Uh, it's kind of a trade-off. The handlebars turn 90 all the way to 90 degrees. I'm just going to drop the camera down here a little bit and uh, just kind of show you kind of messing around here in this parking lot some of the things that I like about the Touring and some of its ability to push the handling a little bit because of the more suspension travel. Even though I just noticed a little wiggle in the back which feels kind of funny. And, uh, and I'm going to hop off this curb and do some just goof around for a minute. Here's a little side view of the suspension. Now I'm kind of curious, I'm gonna try this. <laughs> I've never tried this. If I can actually. Um, but you know, oh boy, I was not sure if I would do that again. So you can say even though it's a little bit more of a, maybe a commuter and not really a scooter that's designed for what I was just doing, it's got enough suspension and it, it it's kind of fun to toss around. Um, to me, it's one of the things I, I do like about the Touring, just that, you know, it feels pretty like it can handle it. All right, hopefully that gets you a pretty good look at this newer version that you move Touring. I do give it to Vora Motors that they, the biggest increase is the battery. Uh, having some more reputable cells is, gives a lot of people comfort and that they did that and some of these other things without raising the price. So, um, and I think there's some discussion of some other changes down the road of maybe a tubeless tire. I don't know if that's gonna be front and rear or you know, how that might evolve. But if you have questions, experience with the Cruiser. Oh man, I just called it the Cruiser. If you have any questions, experience with the Touring, wanna to complain, Whatever, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. Um, and if you want to stick around for uh, and get your data nerd on, uh, you can join me for that video. But thanks a lot. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you next time. Catch the wave. Feel the
unnecessary aside, if you're a major sports retailer and you have a name that's very recognizable, could you please do a little bit better in naming your sales? I'm getting lots of emails from you, Dick Sporting Goods. Here's the image. Think about it.